Okay. All right. Thank you for your thoughts there. Okay. Let me share my screen here for next. Is that? Let's see. I got that right. Okay. As Elizabeth has already said, uh, we will have the state of the future index, the best and worst, uh, best and worst cases of each of the variables and the weights. Will be interesting to see because we haven't done the best and worst for a little while, um, and the work with the executive office of the secretary general is continues. Uh, it's it's the first step. It looks like will be how to help the implementation of our common future, um, which is excellent for all the reasons we've already discussed. But it's only a first step. There are also, as I I think I mentioned, that they're very interested in an alternative to gross national product as a measure of progress. Now, we've all heard this for many, 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 many years, but I've not seen a statement out of the Secretary General's office saying, well, let's do it. And uh, the State of the Future Index is one of the things on their list to consider doing. So if, if all goes well, maybe they just take it over. I mean, you can still do your own state of the future index, you know, for your countries or for a, for a subject matter, like you could do a state of the future index for education. It doesn't have to be a country, but this would be the, but the global one, I think it'd be great if, if the UN takes that over, we could, you know, pass that on. Um, still working on the state of the future. The trouble is I keep getting interrupted by different things. I thought I would have had it done by now, but no but they're all things good that we're being interrupted by. Certainly it was good to be interrupted by the COVID scenario. It's not being interrupted by COVID, but the scenario work was important. The same thing with the updating uh, the global de development content with uh, Ernst & Young and same thing with this UN stuff. It's all good stuff, but it slows me down. But I would say I'm probably at least a third the way there. I hope it'll accelerate over the next few months. Um, continue aspirations and fundraising for the uh, governance study on uh, AGI. One of the things I'd like to stress there that Ebon, I think, uh, did a good job on, and I think Hector also did a good job on, and the idea that anticipatory governance is not governing what's already there. That's not anticipatory. <laughs> so when someone says, well, AGI may not be around for 10, 20 years or whatever, how can you have a governance system? Well, but that's what anticipatory governance is about. You're anticipating something and how do we govern it so that whenever it hits, it's, it's not out of control. Um, and uh, so we're having a hard time. I, I, for those of you who may, might help you in your conversation to know, I'm actually a voting member of the IEEE's uh, organizational AI governance stand, uh, you know, committee is putting together the documents. And it's, it's, I want to tell you, it's an honor to be there. It is beautiful to see such serious, polite, global conversations, you know, sort of like us, but it's like really into details. Like what's the difference between AI, and they're just doing narrow AI, they're not doing general yet. Uh, what's the difference between AI being reliable and AI being predictable in its behavior? Believe it or not, there are not only different definitions, but there's different metrics for you. How do you audit those two words? I mean, it's that kind of detail that you're in. I'm doing this because it helps me understand what needs to be done on governance for general AI as well. Uh, and um, so that that's in process. Uh, yeah. a, but, and, and so, please forgive yeah. me, since this yeah. is something that's life or death and of interest to me. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the people who are saying this is just going to be for the future the AGI is hypothetical. It turns out there is just so much misunderstanding and that's why I'm glad we're working with IEEE because right. um, one of the people I often see, I'll be having dinner with tonight, the woman who used to run the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, Frederica Derema, she runs a conference called DDDAS. And every time I run across somebody who thinks they know about AI, any and there are lots of people who think they know stuff that's not true, I tell them, look on the web for DDDAS video conference. 
I attended that in great detail a few months ago, and it was really amazing because even the groups funded to work on advanced AI, most of them will tell you X, Y, Z is impossible. And then other groups said we did X and we did Y and here it is and here is how it's working today. Here's right. who is doing it. And here are all the people lost because they think it's impossible. Right. Good, good addition, uh, Paul, thank you. Um, next, um, it, it, there's, there's work being done in Greece right now for a state of the future index of Greece. And this is gonna be interesting because it's in collaboration uh, with the president's office because uh, Nondas, the chair of the Millennium Project Node in Greece is the vice chair of the president's foresight council or group or whatever. So it, it could even become a official thing of Greece. We'll see, it, it may not. Now, a, a point on that you should all understand and, uh, and this has to do with Korea. I guess it's quite late in Korea, so <laughs> young who may not be here for this comment. But when we did the first State of the Future Index for Korea, it was independent of the government. There were government participants. It was government funded, if I remember correctly, but it was an independent study. It wasn't an official government study. The second time we did it, it was within the government. Now, the, the problem was, and I was in the, committee meeting of the government officials setting what the variables were going to be. Every variable that made Korea look bad was taken out of the list. So there's a problem. On one hand, you're not as effective necessarily as you're outside, but if you're inside, you run the risk of becoming a public relations document. And as you know, we don't do public relations that well. So that's a warning for everybody. Uh, but anyway, so Greece is there. Philippines, you already heard the report. They're, they're working on it as well. So uh, at some point, we'll have to make a list of how many State of the Future indexes. But I would say there's probably been 10 to 15 countries that have done it by now. Future research methodology, that's on the horizon. I got to get the other stuff done first. But know that if you see a method that's not in futures 3.0 and you think it's a good addition, let me know. We got to peer review it and all that sort of stuff. It's got to follow a, a, a outline and, and so forth, but we'd like to expand it. And if you see new approaches to say scenario construction or other sort of stuff that's not in the old stuff, we can update those chapters as well. So everything is up for grabs. Uh, I suspect this isn't going to come out for <laughs> a year or whatever, but I'm beginning to collect materials for this. And just this is a forewarning on that. And I think that's all I got on some new stuff that we haven't talked about already. So now.